All right, thanks for joining me. I'm going to do another pizza. This is this sausage pizza, 12 inch. That's what it says. I'm going to do it just like I did the other one. So when I buy a pizza from the store, it's usually not good. This one has uh, mozzarella cheese and cheddar cheese in the middle of it. And then it has uh, sausage. So I'm going to separate that by pulling the meat off. I'm putting it over to the side because we're going to add all this back onto the pizza and it's okay if some of these uh, pieces of meat still have the cheese on there like that it won't matter hopefully this cheddar cheese will give it a nice little flavor similar to when you're doing a little lasagna you can mix the cheese the main thing with pizza is to have mozzarella cheese I don't want a ton of cheese stuck to the meat I'm going to need the cheese to sit in place. When you do your pizza, you always put the meat on last to get trapped in the cheese. However, I found when we do it uh, bacon, if bacon is sitting on top, it tends to fall off when you lift up the slice of pizza. So I'm going to try and keep this separate. Why am I doing that? No. I don't need to keep this separate because I'm not sure how it's going to be so I'm going to just kind of mix it so that when I put it back on it'll be all mixed up and all I'm doing is raking it off of course I have glove hands because I don't want this stuff all under my fingernails and I am baking this in a 350 oven for 10 minutes because it's not frozen. It was a frozen pizza when we got it from the store. And you can keep it in the um, refrigerator until you get ready to use it. I mean, excuse me, freezer until you get ready to use it. There, most of that is off. See that? You need that off because you need to put your pasta sauce on there. I usually just use a store a store bought pot to sauce. Look at that. It's, there's a little sauce here, and it's barely any anything on there. So I don't even know what that pasta sauce tastes like. So I'm gonna scrape that on off. I have no idea, but I haven't tasted any from the store that really tastes good. So let me slide this over out of the way so that I can dress the pizza. Here we are. I should get a pizza pan, but I'm not. I don't feel like digging it out. It'll be fine. So there we have that. And I'm going to use this, uh, some kind of marinara sauce. It has whole cherry tomatoes and Italian tomatoes only, it says. I don't know. Anyway, it looks delicious. So I'm going to put some on here. Like so, you don't need a lot, but you need some to flavor the pizza. And the cherry tomatoes, I'm just popping them so they'll go sort of around on the pizza without standing up too much. Those are going to be so good. Almost like fresh pasta sauce. If you don't have this, I prefer to get... Um, any of the spaghetti sauces I don't buy the stuff in the can because I don't want it to taste like the can and um, if you get one that has like chunks of veggies in it that's really great then you don't have to um, do too much to it now right now uh, right about now if you'd like you can put some t um, onions on here some bell pepper on here that would be really great to put some fresh um, bell pepper and onions on it.
So, what would be really pretty if you were serving this to guests or someone else? You could, these are all chopped. I was going to put some of these on it, but I think the um, ring, the fresh looking cut ones will be better. So, I'm not going to use this. And I'm slicing them thin. I'm slicing them thin. And the reason I'm slicing them thin is because I want everything, this is raw, so it'll have to cook. Remember when you do, um, and now I'm just going to break these up on here. Wait, 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 before we do that. Let's put some seasoning on here. This is my own special Italian mix of seasoning that I use. And I don't know what the, this uh, marinara sauce tastes like. If it was spaghetti sauce, I still would juice it up a little bit because I don't know what it tastes like. Um, if you don't, just get some uh, Italian seasoning, any brand, and shake it around on there. And of course, some nice garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic if you want to. Here, I'm just going to put some garlic powder to give it some flavor. You can add some um, onion powder to that also, if you like. I'm going to add some of this bacon bits on here. This bacon here seems like it's mostly fat. Enough on there. One thing when you make your own pizza, don't be stingy with the ingredients. Put them on there. That's it. So the seasoning is on there and it will make up for whatever is not in the pasta sauce that I use. I tend to get a little heavy handed, so I guess I need to spread these around. Because I don't want to put too much on. But this will juice up that pizza for you so it doesn't seem so bland. And with the pizza, you just space everything out. I'll put a few pieces of. Let's cut this. And again, I'm making these super, I'm making these, I'm trying to make them super thin. You don't need a lot, but I'm making them super thin so that it does not take long to cook them. Now, because the pizza is thawed, I don't know if I mentioned this, I'm only going to cook it for about 10 minutes. The dough, rather, is thawed. going to be nice. That's done. And we need to put the pizza, uh, the, um, we have two things. We have the makeshift. I don't have any uh, pepperoni, so I'm using sliced sausage that I did. Oh, that's my timer. For the other pizza. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, so I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to put, this is the sausage that I took off of it. And I'm tricking myself with the sausage that I'm going to put on there because it's not pepperoni. And of course, when you put your meats or whatever your toppings are, space them out. That's there, and now I'm going to mix up this cheese concoction that they gave me 
put it on here right here in the middle and then spread it out towards the edges and just spread it out the store-bought pieces are nasty they really are but if you just defrost them and add some extra fresh toppings your own sauce as you see it didn't call for much it will make it taste a whole lot better and these are a little overcooked the meat will get trapped in the cheese and everyone will be happy normally you go around like this when you're placing your pepperoni oh, that was a little quick, so we'll put that one there that's it I have the cardboard thing underneath and now it's ready to go into the oven right now here is this uh, really juiced up pizza let's see what it tastes like I see bell peppers so we know we have pepper on, bell peppers on here and onions fresh we put fresh bell pepper and fresh onions on here so let's see what this one tastes like it's a little heavy It's just as good as the other one. It's so good. Mm. The fresh bell pepper and the fresh onion give it a whole nother flavor. Mm. And it has loaded with flavor. So trust me, it's worth pulling everything off the store-bought pizza and adding your own stuff to it to really make it taste great and it doesn't taste like store-bought pizza 